John Coloy, DiscountJuicers.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. And what I'm going to do today for you guys is actually show you guys how to make both almond milk. We got some raw almonds in here, as well as fresh coconut milk using some standard kitchen appliances. Uh, the reason why I want to make this video for you guys is because I want to let you guys know that uh, you know cow milk and other animals' milks are not necessary. We don't need to drink them, but we've all been raised on that. I mean. One of the sayings I've heard is that, you know, cow milk is basically baby calf growth formula. So everything in that milk is designed to turn a little baby cow, have you ever seen a baby cow? They're so cute, into a thousand pound heifer. And I, I don't want you guys to turn into heifers, right? So we don't need this cow milk, but what we do need are we need the nutrients that are coming from plant foods, such as the nuts and the coconuts, which do contain some healthy uh, fats in there for us. Now, uh, the thing I want to get into right now is just how to make this stuff fresh because you might be able to go to the store and buy like, you know, canned or bottled uh, almond milk or coconut milk. But the problem with that is when people start processing your food, and not even people, it's big corporations, let's just cut to the chase here. They start putting in stabilizers and all kinds of things that you may not want added to your food because they need to have it shelf stable so they don't lose their money. These things may not be so good for you. Some of the things in there are like carrageenan and you know potentially artificial uh, colors and flavors and you know uh, excess sweeteners and all kinds of processed ingredients. So I want you guys to be able to make your own fresh raw using whole food ingredients. Um, in your home, and that's what I'm going to simply show you guys today using the the uh, Vitamix Turbo Blend VS blender. This is the blender that I like. Uh, it normally comes with a 64 ounce carafe. I'm using it today with the 32 ounce carafe, which I like a lot. And then we're going to use the Omega VSJ843 juicer. Uh, no nut milk bag is necessary when doing the technique that I share with you guys. You know, and here's a standard nut milk bag. I mean, the standard way to make nut milks is the first half is basically uh, blending up the nuts in the water and then stranding it through a nut milk bag. It's kind of like you're milking a cow, but you're milking a nut milk bag. You get your hands all like wet and stuff. And then you got to like clean this nut milk bag. I don't know if you guys look at that, but there's a lot of fine little holes in there. And even, even cleaning it really good, I still got some particulate from last time. And I really hate cleaning nut milk bags. If there's one thing that I'd never want to do again is clean a nut milk bag. And that's why I'm glad the Omega VSJ843 juicer is the best juicer I found to extract nut milks. And you know, other vertical juicers, I've done it in the past in other vertical juicers, but the VSJ843 works the best because I find on many other vertical juicers, you know, uh, the pulp um, will kind of just get stuck inside the machine and actually won't uh, flow out. You know, now you probably wonder, John, can I do this with my juicer? Well, it depends on the kind of juicer you got, right? If you got a centrifugal ejection juicer like the Breville Juice Down, the ones that spin at high speed, don't even waste your time trying to use one of those to make nut milk. <laughs> You'd be better off using a nut milk bag. Now, if you got something like a masticating juicer like the Champion Juicer, once again, save your money, <laughs> save your time. Uh, get a nut milk bag, it's going to do bit, way better. But if you have a slow juicer, whether that's a vertical single auger juicer like I have today, or whether that's a horizontal single auger juicer, or whether that's a dual gear juicer, all those machines will, to some extent, press out uh, the nut milk out of the nut mixture that we'll be creating, and to varying levels of uh, success. So I do have videos that I've done in the past comparing and showing how to make nut milk in a twin gear juicer and how to make nut milk in a horizontal juicer. I don't waste my time with those juicers because I have the one that'll do it the best and that's what I want. I want the least amount of hassles and I want to create the easiest nut milk with the easiest amount to clean. You know, when I'm done, uh, it takes me 30 seconds to clean out the Vitamix. It takes me about, uh, I don't know, under three minutes to clean out the VSJ843 and I'm done. No more sitting around and scrubbing nut milk bags. So first I want to say if you guys enjoy this video and enjoy my work, I would encourage you guys to support me by making your purchase of your Vitamix Turbo Blend VS, which is the blender I recommend for making nut milks and if you want to lead a healthier lifestyle including way more fruits and vegetables in your diet, 
And also that's where we sell the Omega VSJ 843 juicer, which is the juicer I use on a daily basis to not only juice my fruits and vegetables, but also occasionally make nut milk. So it'll also make things like nut butters and frozen fruit sorbets. So you're going to want to check my other videos on that. But yeah, if you want to uh, make your purchase at discountjuicer.com, this allows me to continue to make these educational videos for you guys to show you guys all the different features of the juicers that not even the manufacturer is showing you. And why do I do this? I do this because I'm passionate about these kitchen appliances that allow you to maximize the amount of fruits and vegetables and other plant foods in your diet. It's the plant foods that are given to us on this earth are the most nutritious foods on the entire planet with the least amount of calories, the most amount of vitamins, minerals, and phytochemicals that are the most healing and regenerative for us. So that's what I want you guys to eat. And yeah, if you guys make your purchase of discount juices, this allows me to continue to make videos, um, you know, share with you guys how to grow your food, why you should eat fruits and vegetables, as well as demonstrate the machines like I'm doing today. So thank you guys in advance for those of you guys that will purchase your juicer from me or blender. And thank you guys that have made your purchase in the past uh, from discount juicers. It's much appreciated. All right, so let's get into this uh, demonstration making the nut milks. So as you guys can see, I got a little uh, jar here of almonds today. These almonds are imported from Spain. These are organic almonds from Spain. You know, uh, if you go to buy raw almonds at your local health food store and they're from California, they've been pasteurized. Yes, even if they are organic. They could be, uh, you know, chemically pasteurized or steam pasteurized. Now, I definitely don't recommend the chemical pasteurization, the steam pasteurization not so bad but i prefer not to have pasteurized almonds the only reason why they do that is because they're uh the almond uh you know uh, farmers and commission are afraid of e coli contamination because of the way in which they process and grow the almonds so if you don't want to get pasteurized almonds i do encourage you guys to get almonds that are imported these ones are actually organic almonds from trader joe's that are imported from spain i'm not sure if they're still selling these i've had these for a little bit or also, the other way to get around this is to buy almonds direct from the farmers in California. Farmers are allowed to sell the almonds uh, direct if they're a small business uh, to you guys without pasteurization. If they go through normal grocery store channels and all this kind of stuff, then they must be pasteurized according to law. So yeah, so we don't want to use these almonds just out of the jar. You don't want to just put the almonds in there and add your water and then blend it up, right? Bad idea. You got things like phytates and enzyme inhibitors that may cause digestive upset for some people. You know, it causes me in some instances to like actually uh, break out on my skin because of some of the proteins or some of the things in there. So what you want to do is you want to take them and you want to soak them. So what I've done here is I've taken uh, one cup of almonds, uh, you know, just flattened out one cup right here and I've soaked them overnight and I don't know if you guys could see that but look at this water in there that water is like murkily cloudy and nasty like if you don't soak your almonds you're gonna be eating this in your almond milk so you're gonna go ahead and soak this overnight 8 to 12 hours I use one cup of almonds and then we're gonna use uh, between two and four cups of water that's the normal recommendation if you use two cups it's gonna be a a stronger almond milk, maybe like a 2% milk, and if you use like four cups of water, you're diluting the fat a little bit more, then it's gonna be more like a skim milk for you. I like to go right in the middle, maybe about three cups. So yeah, since I've soaked my almonds, the next step I need to do, I'll do it off camera, I'm gonna go ahead and actually drain this off and uh, rinse the almonds, and then I'll come back with just the almonds that have been uh, drained and rinsed because we wanna throw out the soap water, or better yet, water your plants with it. All right, I'm back. So now we got the almonds basically drained and then I rinsed them off through a strainer and then I put them back in here. So I started off with one cup uh, level of almonds filled with water over the top, soaked it overnight. And then when you're done, it'll probably expand into maybe one and a quarter, one and a half cups because the almonds kind of kind of start to germinate and start to basically expand when they fill with liquid. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna, generally you would add water to this mixture between two and four cups, like I mentioned earlier. And instead of using water, I like to actually use something that's gonna add flavor and further nutrition to my almond milk. And what that is today, that's uh, simply coconut water. So I have some coconut water here, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and fill this uh, Vitamix craft up. Probably about three cups. So let's see, let's go ahead, three cups. 
right at three cups right there. All right, great. Right, of course, you could use uh, regular filtered water, but I like to use the coconut water. And then we're going to go ahead and add our almonds. So once again, you know, normally you would put uh, two cups of, uh, of water to one cup almonds, or you could do three or four, depending on how light or thick you want your milk. We're going to then put the top on, and then we're just going to go ahead and blast this up on high. ran that for a little bit now we turn it off we blended all the almonds up this is a very important step you know I know there's some videos online and some people say once you soak your almonds you could take your water and your liquid and your almonds and pour that through the juicer at the same exact time to make your almond milk now I don't recommend this and here's the reason why because when you pour the water and the almonds into the juicer basically the juicer has to crush up the almonds inside the machine and extract all the rich delicious goodness whether that's the essential fats the vitamins the minerals the phytonutrients and in my opinion they kind of just don't really mix well and then the the milk comes out and then you got the almond meal come out and when you do it you know using the whole almonds or the whole uh you know nut your milk tastes more skim milkish and i really like that milk that fatty rich milky consistency right so that's why when you do it like this, you blend and homogenize all the different nutrients and flavors and, and phytochemicals and lignans and all these things inside there. And then you pour it through the machine so now the machine could easily separate out the liquid milk from the fiber. And so you're going to get a much better and more complete extraction. So this is very important. And today I'm using almonds, but you could use literally any kind of nut or seed actually. So once we take this off, oops, <laughs> once we take this off, you can see we just have a blended mixture of uh, almonds and water. Of course, you can drink this, but it's pretty doggone pulpy, and it actually uh, raised up the uh, level there. So next thing, easy thing, instead of pouring this through a nut milk bag and straining it out, all we got to do is turn this machine on, the Omega VSJ 843, runs at 43 revolutions per minute. We're going to take it and then just uh, pour this right in the machine. You want to make sure the machine is set up properly for juicing. And as you pour this liquid through that contains the fiber, what's going to come out here is a nice clear milk with no fiber. And after a little while, you're going to start to see on this side some of the uh, pulp coming out. Now, one of the best juicers for doing this is actually a press such as the Wells Press, that will get the pulp like sawdust bone dry, right? But once again, with the press, you got a press cloth, which is pretty much like a nut milk bag that you will have to clean out. That's why I like using this machine, because I'll show you guys in a second, the uh, pulp coming out is actually uh, super dry, and this milk is light, nice, white, and clear, without all the particulates. So this machine is doing an excellent job of uh, you know getting all the delicious milk out without the fiber. I remember thinking, John, you're wasting a lot of stuff, man. There's nutrients still left in the pulp. Well, all right, there's, so there's some fiber and stuff still left in the pulp, and maybe some other nutrients. You could use this in baking. You know, you, you could use it instead of flour in some recipes. You could use it to make cookies or other things. I'll probably just mix it in with my dog food, and he'll end up eating it. <laughs> Get him some extra fiber in there. All right, so yeah, as you guys can see, we poured all this mixture through, all done all through. And now look at this. We added three cups of coconut water plus the one cup of soaked almonds. And on this measuring cup, we're uh, well past uh, three cups, three and a quarter cups at this point, and the machine's still working. Let's see, let's go ahead and scoop this into the funnel there. I missed a little bit. So once you pour the last bit of the almond uh, water mixture, or almond coconut water mixture in this case, into the juicer, you want to let the juicer run for a little bit more before you turn it off, because sometimes it takes a bit to, to uh, work properly. And uh, when the pulp stops coming out of the chute here, then you're ready to basically stop the machine. So it looks like no major amounts of the almond milk are still coming out of the spout, so let's go ahead and turn this machine off. 
go ahead and plug that spout. And I want to show you guys this for a second. I mean, this is the almond meal. Look at that in there. Can you guys see that? I'm going to go ahead and pull some out with my hand. We're going to go ahead and take this in my hand. And I'm going to go ahead and squeeze. And look between my hand. Look. Am I, can you see me squeezing out any liquid? I mean, I'm squeezing quite hard. All I see is a, like a pulp patty. You know, I venture to say that this is even more efficient than some people when they press out their nut milks in the nut milk bag. Also, it's significantly easier to clean, and it's done a really excellent job extracting the nut milk, you know, compared to any other device that I've ever seen out there. So if you make large quantities of nut milks, you know, this is the machine you simply got to buy. So finally, we're going to go ahead and pour out this nut milk. Let's go ahead and pour out this nut milk. Let me show you guys this consistency. Look at that. There's like very little, if any, fiber in there. The VSJ has done an amazing job at straining it all out. Wow. Over three cups. Now we're going to go ahead and try it. Mmm. Wow, that's a good, wow. I really love those almonds from Spain. They really have that like almond essential oil. Like some people add like, you know, whatever almond essence to their nut milks to make them taste like almonds because like California almonds like suck. <laughs> this one actually has that really good uh, flavor uh, built in like that almond extract flavor. It's quite delicious. There is some fine particulate in there. So I would encourage you guys if you don't want that in there to strain the milk further to get that out if that's not your desired effect. Now, once you have this, which is your base milk, you know, I would store this in the fridge for no more than three to four days max. And once you have this base milk, now you could do anything you want with it. You could add this to smoothies. If this is not sweet enough for you, which it's actually quite delicious for me, you could blend it with some fruit, which I recommend, you know, to make it sweeter. You could actually blend it with something like uh, some dates or some raisins. To add some sweetness you could put some add some vanilla bean in there to make it the vanilla flavor you could add carob uh, powder raw carob powder and some vanilla to kind of give it a chocolatey flavor you could add your own probiotics in there to culture this into uh you know a cultured uh almond milk i mean so many different things but it's only available if you guys make it fresh at home all right so this is the almond milk uh, let me go ahead and put that right there for you guys Next, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, reset up and we're going to go ahead and show you guys how to make some coconut milk. So now I'm ready to make the coconut milk and it's super simple. Now, actually, I prefer the coconut milk actually even over the almond milk. Number one, coconuts are going to be cheaper to make the coconut milk. One coconut like this cost me about a buck and the almonds that I use to make that much almond milk with is about four ounces. And I don't know if you guys priced organic almonds lately, but it sometimes it's like $15 a pound. So I don't know, what's that like $4 or something? And it's gonna cost you a lot more to make almond milk unless you dilute it down. And that's why I just simply like coconut milk. In addition, the coconut has the medium chain fatty acids, which I like a lot. And also the almond milk, one of the negative things is, is that it may imbalance your omega-6 to three ratio or three to six ratio, however you wanna look at that. And we want to really maximize the amount of omega-6s we have. So a thing I would recommend to you, if you are going to make almond milk, you know, add a couple tablespoons of flax seeds in when you soak your almonds. So that gets blended up in there, and that will help offset the, uh, all the high omega-6s uh, from the almonds alone. So to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and open up this coconut. Now, I've had many people watch my videos in the past and say, John, can I use, like, uh, you know, coconut flakes to do this, to make the coconut milk. And I, I do not recommend that. You know, uh, coconut flakes, unless you make them yourself for a processed food product, you know, I'm highly confident, even though they don't list it on the label, that they do, do, do some kind of bleaching to it because I break out. I think they're adding sulfides or something in there to keep it nice and bright white. I break out, uh, you know, when I have the coconut flakes, so I really don't like to buy them. And you just don't get the same texture or consistency that you do. And it's not going to work as well because, you know, you're losing a lot of the water content. I mean, freshest is always best. So anyways, I got a little fillet knife here with a nice little fine point. And I just go through one of the holes on the coconut. Uh, there's always two eyes and a mouth on the coconut. It looks like a monkey face. The eyes have a little brow. 
So I like to use this little knife. I can get in there and, and uh, poke out the one hole. Then we're just gonna go ahead and uh, you know drain that into our blender craft. All right, looks like we're about drained, and it looks like we got about eight ounces of the coconut water total. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and add additional coconut water. And uh, once again, we're gonna go ahead and take me up, on this one actually, I like to do up to about a uh, little bit over three cups. And then we're gonna go ahead and uh, next step is actually crack this coconut open. So cracking a coconut, it's not that hard. If you're not skilled with a knife, you could put it in a uh, you know, triple plastic bag and then smash it against the concrete ground outside. I like to use a standard meat cleaver. And I'm not using the front blade, I'm using the back of the blade, the blunt end. And I just basically tap this coconut around the equator. Tap it and turn it. And a shock wave will go on the coconut. And as you guys can see, I was easily to cut it in half. Now you want to inspect the coconut. Smell it, you know, it looks alright, smells alright. Sometimes a bad coconut, if you got a bad one, it's very important to get pick good ones, is to, you know, make sure when you shake it, it's full of water. If it's not shaking and you don't hear water inside there, that means it's probably a bad coconut. Also, go to a store that sells lots of coconuts. So, like, uh, Mexican markets, as you find, sells a lot of coconuts. Or uh, Asian markets, you know, generally supermarkets don't sell coconuts, and a lot of the produce guys don't know what to look for when there's a bad coconut and they just see the coconut, oh, it's all right, because they can't tell it went bad on the inside. And uh, yeah, so, and return it if you don't get a good one. Anyways, now we got a special tool to pop out the meat. We're gonna go ahead and just put this tool in between the, uh, the shell and the meat, and we're just gonna go ahead and simply pop it out. All right, so there we go, we got the meat off. Now, if you do get some of the, uh, the shell on here, it's called the testa, it's like brown. You don't need to sit there with a knife and cut it off, it's alright. It's like the skin on side the almonds, right? You're not like taking off the skins off all the almonds, actually. There's extra nutrients in here, in my opinion. So we're just going to go ahead and crack the uh, coconut meat up into different pieces and uh, put it into our uh, blender carafe. Now I just got to get the meat out the other half. Alright, all right. got that last bit of meat out of the coconut. I mean, it's easier to soak almonds, but man, I really prefer the flavor of the coconut milk over the almond milk. So once again, you know, what we really want to do is uh, once we add the coconut water and the coconut meat, we really want to be up at about the uh, 32 ounce mark or a little bit above that. That's kind of like my standard reference range. Then once again, we're going to go ahead and put this lid on the Vitamix and we're going to crank it on high. So once you blend it up pretty well and it's all you know homogenized and blended up in there, no big large coconut chunks. Once again, you're gonna go ahead and take this mixture off. And you know, you could totally drink this mixture. And this is why the people say, John, you should use a blender, not a juicer, because you're gonna keep all the fiber. Well, I don't know about you, but drinking this mixture with the thick fibrous chunks in there is not too fun for me. I wanna, you know, extract all the fiber, you feed that to my compost bin all my beneficial bacteria, my compost bin, and I want to drink the delicious coconut milk. Now, much like the same thing with the vegetables, especially when juicing, right? People like to blend up their vegetables. And I would, you know, say it's definitely better to blend vegetables than to not even at all. But in my opinion, it's better to juice them because there's re documented research studies that show you get higher levels of phytonutrients uh, when you juice the vegetables in this case broccoli, at a lower RPM than running something at a very high RPM. Especially the most valuable phytonutrients and phytochemicals can be damaged at high RPM when oxygen is constantly being introduced into the mixture. At a low RPM, such as 43 RPM, there is much less oxygen infiltration which is causing less oxidative damage to the nutrition that's being created in the juice and so in uh, test that they've done with broccoli juice made in a slow juicer similar to this and broccoli that was processed through a blender at high speed they put it in uh, petri dishes with six different kinds of active cancer cells and the one with the juice had the least amount of cancer replication so the cancer did not grow as fast so it had more inhibition effects than the blended because in my opinion, based on the research study that's been published, it's due to the oxidative damage. So that's why I like the juicing. 
And also it's very important, especially with the vegetables, you know, we want to break open those hard fibrous cell walls to extract the nutrients out. And that's why you guys are doing the same exact thing with the almonds or the coconut, because you want to extract the nutrients, especially that one called fat. Now fat is just one of the many different macronutrients, but I want you guys to focus your diets on the micronutrients, the vitamins and the minerals, the phytochemicals, all these kind of things are much more important than just the fats, the proteins, and the carbs, <laughs> all right? So let's go ahead and uh, pour this coconut mixture uh, through the juicer. Once again, I did not clean it after doing the almond milk because we're just doing another milk. And make sure we just pour it right down the chute there. This mixture is a lot thicker than the almond milk mixture was. But as you guys can see, we're instantly getting that creamy white milk out. And as you guys can see, we got a, a little bit of the extra almond pulp coming out, but now we got the clear white uh, coconut uh, pulp coming out. And let me tell you, man, you guys just got to get one of these juicers to make this recipe. Coconut milk, one of my favorite things ever. I turn my nose up to all those bottled coconut package junk. And don't, when you make this kind of coconut milk, it's not like that condensed coconut milk in a can, right? This is like a totally different thing. It's like much more creamy, frothy, rich. And once again, you know, this is the recipe I like to use about, uh, you know, four cups total. But feel free to add more liquid or less liquid based on what you're doing. If you want to make a coconut cream right, use just the coconut water that came in uh, the coconut without adding extra coconut water. And this will allow you to make a really thick cream, but make sure once again, you blend it first. Now the problem that you're going to have with many slow vertical juicers, aside from the VSJ, is when you pour this mixture in like I did today, it's basically going to back up in the chute and it's actually not going to eject the pulp and it's not going to eject the, the milk out for you guys. Now the reason why it's doing that is because the juicer is designed to juice, not extract coconut milks. So I found that this machine extracts the coconut milks the best. So in that case, what you want to do if it's getting backed up, then you want to add something. Maybe add a piece of carrot to juice at the same time you're making the milk. So then you're going to have a carrot juice infused milk. You know, I've also just done this technique in the VSJ with something like cactus fruit or, you know, uh, celery or cucumbers or carrots or beets. And that's, that makes an excellent soup base. So now making, turning your soup into, turning your milk into even something else, which is amazing. Plus if your juicer is not working because you don't have a VSJ, uh, you know, that's going to help it work better. So, I mean, look, we're already done. Stop, pulp stopped flowing. The milk stopped flowing. Looks like on this one we made uh, 28 ounces total. And it looks like we made a lot more pulp than on the almonds, but we had a lot more, uh, you know, coconut in there. So, once again, you know, I want to show you guys this pulp. That's the pulp there. Here's it in my hand. I'm squeezing this as hard as I can. I can't even get it to get a drop out. Now, you know, when I juice vegetables in the VSJ, you know, depending on the vegetable that I'm juicing, you know, there'll be a drop or two, but doing it in this method gets it completely dry. And once again, I don't recommend you guys pour in the coconut water and put chunks of coconut meat. That's not the same as doing this the way I did it with the blender. That's going to put extra wear and tear on your screen and it may break your screen. Plus it's not going to get the level of extraction or the level of delicious goodness that I showed you guys today. So now I gotta try me some coconut milk and we're gonna go ahead and pour this out so you guys can see the consistency on that. Look at this. That's a nice milk consistency. We got that froth on the top which is some of the fat. It's starting to separate a little bit so you want to shake it up. Go ahead and pour this out. Nice coconut milk. You know I do recommend you guys drink a different nut milks whether that's the almond milk or coconut milk, once again, the coconut milk was stored in the fridge three to five days is what, how long I like to store it. Maximum, this stuff's not going to last more than a day hanging out in my house. It's a treat for me to make the nut milks. I prefer to, you know, have maybe a handful of nuts or seeds or a coconut a day. I don't generally like to, you know, make nut milks because I find that if you continue to make nut milks, you're going to maybe, you know, raise the amount of fats that you're eating in your diet. So I like to use it for a special treat on occasion instead of just a mainstay in my diet like many Americans make a cow's milk a mainstay in their diet. I would encourage you guys to make fresh vegetable juices a mainstay in your diet and use this for treats. But that's just my opinion on it. Let's go ahead and try this coconut milk here. Mmm. 
and I'm tasting some particulate in there. You don't like the particulate, you're just going to want to go ahead and run this through a little strainer to get all that stuff out. But other than that, I got to say it's totally delicious. I much more prefer the coconut milk over the almond milk. You guys see we're getting some of the separation in there. So you just cap this off and shake it up. It'll recombine. But yeah, store it no more than three to five days. And once you have it to this level, you know, then you could add it to smoothies. You know, you could use a juicer to juice vegetables at the same time or fruits to make other kind of concoctions. You know, fruit and coconut milk concoctions. You could use it to make a coconut milk infused with uh, turmeric and ginger and carrot juice or carrots for a soup base. Or I've done it with uh, bell peppers and tomatoes. I mean, the possibilities are endless when you guys have the right appliances to do the best job at home. And this is what I encourage for you guys. You know, instead of like playing with stupid nut milk bags, get your hands all dirty and then try to clean that thing, pick up these uh, appliances, the, both the Vitamix Turbo Blend VS and the Omega VSJ843. Not only will you be able to make nut milks, you will also be able to enable your family to get healthier by eating and including more vegetables and fruits in your diet, especially the leafy green vegetables because this makes leafy greens much more easy to eat. Like I couldn't just sit there and eat all the coconut meat out of this. Some of you guys like to do that. I don't like to do that. I'd much rather drink the coconut milk to get the nutrients from the coconut meat. And I'm not, this is not coconut oil. You know, coconut oil is 100% fat. We do have some fat content in here. I'm sure some of that went, came out with a pulp, but that's a pretty, you know, low fat pulp there at that point. It tastes horrible. I tasted the almond meal off camera. I had to spit it out. It's like, oh, this doesn't taste good. So dry. But I want you guys to get your fats from whole food sources, you know, such as making your own almond milk and extracting your own coconut milk with the machines. And these, what that's what the machines does with the vegetables. They could take one pound of leafy green vegetables, you juice them, you make one cup of juice. Hey, that's a, that's a cool thing. You could actually juice your coconut milk and then add some, uh, you know, vegetables and things in it and have a coconut milk vegetable juice. And then you're going to get, guess what? You're going to get higher uptakes of the phytonutrients in the vegetables because when you're adding some fat into that, you know, it hangs out in our digestive system longer so your body can access more of the nutrition in there. So yeah, I love these machines for making the nut milks and now you guys learn the best way to do it possible and if I learn any new ways to do it, I'll come out with newer videos but at this point I don't know how this combination could be beat for making any kind of nut milks out there. If you guys enjoyed this episode, hey, please give me a thumbs up. Also, be sure to support me and my work by making your purchase at discountjuicers.com. Thank you for supporting me. Also, be sure to check my past episodes. I have over 450 episodes on this YouTube channel demonstrating all the different kinds of juicers, a lot of different things you could do with it, including the VSJ. I have many different uh, videos on the Vitamix as well and some of the things you can do with the Vitamix as well as dehydrators because I'm all about selling you the appliances that allow you to eat more fresh fruits and vegetables in your diet so that you guys could be healthy. And be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss out on any of my new and upcoming episodes that are coming out about every five to seven days. You never know what I'll be uh, showing you guys and what you'll be learning in the episode because I always try to pack these episodes with a wealth of knowledge. Everything that I've learned over the last 21 years of eating this healthy diet that I'm on. Finally, be sure to share this video with somebody that's still using a nut milk bag so they can see how much easier their job could be <laughs> and how much more fun and how much of a better end result they could get and how they could also add more phytonutrients and phytochemicals in their diet as well with especially the juicer. So uh, once again, my name is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Be sure to visit DiscountJuicers.com slash YouTube for special promotional offers for YouTube visitors. All right, this is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. And what I'm going to do in this episode is show you guys the best way to get more vegetables in you. So congratulations if you clicked on this video. You probably don't like vegetables or don't like them too much and maybe you even hate them but you know that they are beneficial and that you should be getting more into. So before I share with you guys the 